This is a Lego version of Moff Gideon's light cruiser from The Mandalorian, and yes, it is indeed minifigure scale. That means it's 24.6 feet long and 11.5 feet wide. It's got over 800 thousand pieces in it and it's just a sight to behold. In this video let's take a closer look at all these awesome details and let's also be sure to take a look at the internal structure of this mock and get some insights into what it takes to put a behemoth like this together. Let's go. While I was at Brickvention 2023, I had the pleasure of seeing this absolutely incredible mock in person. And honestly, it's one of the most visually impressive things I've ever seen built in LEGO. This was built by Aaron Monaghan and Martin Harris. Yep, just two builders put this whole thing together. That in itself is very impressive. I spoke to them as they were setting this up, and they said that it obviously took them ages to build it. But one of the main reasons they set out to build something like this is they'd seen all the incredible, huge, massive scale stuff that's uh, often seen at some of the big American conventions. And they hoped that some of the Americans would see this and realize that, hey, some of us Aussie builders can build just as big like them which is a bit of fun. He also mentioned that they needed to rent out an entire storage shed just to have the space to build this thing, and even then they had to build it in sections. And on top of all of that, it took them two whole days just to set this up. Thankfully, Brickvention runs for four days, so they were able to relax a little bit on the public days. But yeah, so impressive. So let's begin now by taking a look at the internal structure of this build, and then we'll study the finished product afterwards and take a look at all the impressive details. So while it was being set up, I took some photos of the structure, and right off the bat we can see that it's built on this big metal frame. You see a lot of LEGO certified professionals, as well as some of the official Legoland models, do this exact same thing with metal structures. Obviously LEGO itself can be very strong, but it can only be so strong, and when you're building huge models like this, you really do need that additional metal support. Not only does it just make transportation easier, it also just helps with general strength and stability as well. We can also see in these images a series of interconnecting brick-built supports and Technic bricks and lift arms and all sorts of stuff that are built around this metal frame. And I think it's cool that all of these really thin supports work together to help keep this thing sturdy and strong. If we look closely, we can see a lot of these system supports use longer bricks in conjunction with some longer plates on the top as well as on the bottom as well. This way they're locked in from multiple angles and it keeps it sturdy, but it also keeps it lightweight, which I guess you also have to factor in for a build like this. You can also see in some of these images some of these ratchet joints are being used here to pull off some of these complicated angles that help make up the general frame of the ship. Pretty nice way to do it. Additionally in some of these images we can see that certain joint areas are wrapped with cling wrap. Now this is likely for a couple different reasons. It could be to help it be transported. The builders who made this were actually from Adelaide and this convention was held in Melbourne, which is a bit of a distance away. Now here are some images of the different models and different sections and things in different containers as it was being transported. So obviously all of this was in many different modules and it was separated into different boxes and things and that's how they brought it here. But we can see that some of these different panels and modules were wrapped in cling wrap. Now this helps keep everything tight and held together and it kind of minimizes breakages in transport. But also it's good because if something does break in transport, sometimes you build something and you think it's sturdy, but it's not quite sturdy enough. Uh, at least if it does break, it'll still be wrapped within that cling wrap. So, you know, one specific piece that's in that module doesn't go flying and end up in box 52. And then you go, where the heck does this piece come from? At least everything's all sort of locked together in one spot. But going back to those cling wrap structural areas, I suspect this is so that uh, some of the like key breaking areas or breaking points or some of the more important structural areas are locked locked together, and they don't come undone while the model's being set up. And I guess this is pretty smart, and it would also probably minimize a lot of the setup time so that things don't separate or come undone or whatever, it just removes complications, and I think this is a very clever idea. It may not inherently be purest to wrap something with cling wrap, but when you're building something on a scale like this, I think you just have to cut some of those corners, otherwise the Lego's just not going to hold itself together in the way you want it to. Once the overall frame is put in place, we can see that these individual modules are then placed onto the structure. Here's a close-up of one of the bottom panels and how it's been attached. We can see some of these lift arms branching down and then locking in with various plates that have holes in them so that the Technic pins that are branching off of these lift arms can just directly lock onto the LEGO itself. It's a smart way to do it, and this seems to more or less be the way that the majority of these modules are attached. Seeing all the modules come on was actually a pretty fun experience in person. 
And already, even when some of these modules are being attached, you can see some of the crazy details and unique angles that they've managed to achieve as they were building it. You can also see a variety of wires as well. And yes, a lot of this does light up. You'll see that as we continue throughout this video. It's lovely seeing a bunch of lights in this as well. It just adds a, a whole nother feature to this mock. Uh, and if you're interested, of course, those lights were uh, provided by a company called Glowbricks. I will have a link in the description below if you want to check out more of those products. This is not sponsored or anything. I just saw that that's who you know the company was that helped provide the lights. So I thought I'd mention them just in case you're interested in doing something similar, you know. So also taking a look at the engines, we can see that they have been made using train track pieces and just sort of forming a circle with them, uh, which is really clever. But I mean, honestly, you could only really do this technique on something that's at this scale here. Uh, so it's lovely to see how some pieces are being used here uh, when you are building such a huge mock like this. It's uh, almost a completely different ball game when you get to play uh, in a, a bigger ballpark like that. It's awesome. So as more and more panels are attached, we can slowly start to see the finished product start to form. And when it does come together, it's just so beautiful. Let's now dive into a lot of the awesome details that are on this finished model now. So right off the bat, the thing that I think impressed me the most about this mock is, yes, it's huge. And that in itself is very impressive. But it doesn't ignore details because of its size. I see a lot of mocks that are massive, and they're really cool. But when you take a closer look at the techniques and the details, they're really lacking. It's just big for big sake. But this mock, despite its size, there's so much incredible stuff going on when you do take a closer look. I mean, some of these beautiful greebles all throughout the ship look awesome. And I mean, they're scattered throughout the entire ship. There's also some awesome little hangar bays at the base of the ship. One of them has Moff Gideon's TIE Fighter in it as well, uh, and in a whole bunch of different minifigures as well. There's also another hangar bay on the other side, and we can see some beautifully greebled walls and some of those lights in action as well, helping it match the source material. Those look fantastic. Now, it was hard to find images of the version of this ship from the Mandalorian TV show that match some of the photos that I'd taken in person, but if we compare it to the version of this ship that's seen in Star Wars Rebels, we can still see a good level of accuracy behind the angles, the size, and the shape of the ship, which that in itself is also very impressive. So it's, it's nice to know that when you compare it to the source material, it's, uh, it still holds up. I also love seeing some of the greebling and how areas use colors like red and yellow and not just purely gray. Because, yeah, look, it'd be nice if this was just a pure sea of gray. But I think adding some of these brighter colors just really helps break up that monotony and just makes it more fun. I did also spy a few bionicle pieces used as greebling here, and it's always lovely seeing a few little cheeky bionicle references in a system build like this. Plus, using some of these larger weapon pieces here as greebles I think is only really possible on a scale this large. So I think uh, not only is it fun because I like bionicle, but it's also cool because it actually works really nicely. So during public hours, the back of this monk was left open so that the public could see a glimpse of the ship's inner workings. And I thought this was a really fun way of involving the public a little bit more and helping answer some questions that I'm sure they definitely had. I mean, a lot of the times when I walked past this, I heard a lot of the public asking, how was it built? You know, how did you transport it? All that sort of stuff. And seeing the back here certainly answers that question. So all in all, this was just a sight to behold. Aaron and Martin just nailed this mock. It's accurate, it's so detailed, and it's just so well made, especially when you take a look at how it's packed, prepared, and all of the internal structure that helped make it. It's so cool. So I just adore this build, and I hope you do too. I really wanted to share it with you guys. It's just so well built. Stay tuned for more videos of mocks from Brickvention 2023 coming soon to this channel. Thank you very much for watching. Happy building, and bye for now.